This is Dark Illumination Report Podcast, Episode 5. The views expressed on this podcast are the views of the podcast host only. The host neither represents or endorses any specific satanic organization or tradition. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes, and please tell a friend. I'd really appreciate it. You can also follow me on Twitter at RJWO15. If you have questions or comments, you can leave us a message at speakpipe.com forward slash D-I-R podcast. That's speakpipe.com forward slash D-I-R podcast. This is the Dark Illumination Report podcast with R.J. Womack. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the podcast. I'm glad you're here. To start off the show today, I have a few announcements. I wanted to let you know that I'm starting a new feature on the blog called Something Stupid Wednesdays. And Something Stupid Wednesdays is all about um, stupid Christian conspiracy theories or stupid religious conspiracy theories that I find entertaining. I don't know if you know this about me or not, but I'm one of those people that really gets into watching crazy Christian conspiracy theories and watching conspiracy theorists. So what I want to do is, as long as I'm doing that, I want to share it with people. I figure, you know, if I spend time doing this, then I might as well share it with somebody, right? Somebody who might appreciate it besides me. So I'm going to share it with you every Wednesday for something stupid Wednesdays. So I hope you'll show up and have a look at the videos I'm posting. The other thing I wanted to let you know about is that I'm going to be adding new segments to the show every week, every episode, until I actually get the uh, show in the format I actually want it to be in. I've always intended for the show to have an entertainment segment, a personal development segment, and spiritual segments. I've always wanted to do something different than what other Satanists have done in the past. And my beliefs and my approach to Satanism has always been different anyway, so I figure... Why not go ahead and go with it? In the next episode, I'll be adding a review segment, as I talked about previously, um, a re- book review segment where I'll be reviewing occult books, personal development books, and any other book that I think might help you along your spiritual path. The whole idea of this show is to help you develop yourself and help you to become a better instrument for Satan. Because after all, I'm assuming if you're listening to this show, You're not just here for yourself. You actually believe in Satan and you believe part of your obligation or part of your belief system is that you should serve Satan's kingdom. So I want to provide you with information that I think will help you do that. I know that some of you purists out there probably don't want to hear about anything else other than religion, but I think Satan is a God of balance. And if we're going to represent him as a God of balance, then the show has to be balanced to reflect his nature, because after all, this is about him and about developing ourselves to be the best person we can be, not only for ourselves, but for Satan himself and for his kingdom. And I truly believe that. Since I really believe that, I feel like the show has to reflect that. Because if it doesn't, then I'm not really representing my beliefs accurately. I'm kind of taking the Mike Michalowicz approach to this podcast. Mike Michalowicz is a business author who suggests that If you want to create something, whether it's a product or a service, or in this case, a podcast, you should create a podcast that you want to do and the podcast that you want to see and then hope you can build a tribe around it. This is contrary to the typical business advice, which is build a product that your customers want and then sell it to them. His suggestion is that you build a product that you want and then hope that other people will want it, too. He says, what's the point of doing something if you're going to be miserable the whole time you're doing it? If you're going to hate it the whole time you're doing it, then why do it at all? So what I'm trying to do is build a podcast that I think you'll appreciate or that some people will appreciate. And I hope that ultimately you will. Now let's get on with the main part of the show. I know I said I was going to start the uh, segment for Beginning Satanist next week. But I think there's a few things that I want to talk about before I get to my main topic that I think are really important for young Satanists to consider. The first thing is you really have to have a passion for Satanism. You really have to have a fire inside you that drives you, a real belief in Satan and the principles of Satanism. Because if you don't, you won't make it. 
you're going to receive criticism from everybody you meet, whether it's your parents, whether it's your friends, you're going to receive some kind of pushback when you admit you're a Satanist. So if you don't have a real passion for it, you're not going to last. And the only way you're going to last in Satanism is if you have a tough skin and you really believe in the principles you say you believe in. Because even on the internet, you're going to meet other Satanists that don't agree with your point of view. You're going to meet other people that are going to question everything about you. And they may even criticize your family and your friends and even your personal life, even though it has nothing to do with the religion. That's just the way Satanists are. That's what they do. As somebody put it to me once, Satanists are not sheep, we're wolves. And wolves have a tendency to fight with each other. They have a tendency not to get along. They test each other's strength and each other's will. So you have to have a strong will and a strong passion in order to survive in this religion. You have to realize I've been in this religion for almost 35 years. I've seen groups come and go. I've seen individuals come and go. I've been here all of this time and I'm still as passionate as I've ever been because I truly believe in the principles I say I believe in. I believe in my God and nothing that anybody says is going to change that. You see, I didn't get involved in this religion because I had some friend of mine bring over a satanic Bible. I got into this religion because I had an experience with Satan that convinced me that he existed. I didn't join a group and that group tell me what Satanism was. I developed my practices on my own without any influence from anybody else until much later. My beliefs in Satan were not connected to anybody or any specific group. So there's no one that has any control or any influence over my belief in Satan because the relationship I built with Satan is based on my personal relationship with him. You have to have that relationship, otherwise you'll leave the religion as soon as you meet the first obstacle in your way. As soon as the first person criticizes you, or as soon as it gets difficult, you'll run the other direction like so many people do. Because it's never been about their relationship with Satan because they never had one. It was just about fitting in with a group they belonged to, or friends they liked, or a girl they liked, or a guy they liked. It was never about Satan in the first place. Another issue I want to bring up is this talk about self-initiation. You know, a lot of people put a lot of mystical meaning behind that. But ultimately, what are we talking about? We're talking about spiritual evolution, spiritual growth. And what most people seem to forget is that life itself is initiation. The events that happen to you, both bad and good, are a process of initiation that help you spiritually grow. Not everything about initiation or occultism is mystical. Life itself is magic. Life itself is a learning process. That's what life is about. So as a Satanist, we shouldn't be looking at things going, well, we have to separate spirituality from our life. We should put them in the same category. We shouldn't separate them. We should use what we learn from life and what we learn from spiritual practice and put them all together. That's what true initiation is. Too many people want to separate spiritual practice from actual living. And there's no need for that because Satanists understand that we're both spiritual and material. We're not Christians. We don't hate life. We don't hate existence. We're not looking for somebody to save us from life. So we take life at face value. We take life for what it is. That's what Satan teaches. So we learn from life just like we learn from the spiritual practices we practice. This is another thing that I've always had a problem with, with magicians, the way they look at magic. Uh, I mean, I have a problem with it because if an architect comes up with an idea for a building, that idea came from his spirit and his mind, and then he took the time to draw it out, sketch it out, and then start to direct people into building it. All of those people, including the architect, had to direct their will to make that building manifest. That's a magical act. When a songwriter writes a riff and he writes lyrics and it becomes an album or becomes a hit song, that's an act of alchemy. That's an act of magic. That thing did not exist until he made it manifest. People make magic so much more complicated than it has to be. People make spirituality so much more complicated than it has to be because they want it to be some Harry Potter shit. It's not Harry Potter shit. 
It's very, very natural. Magic happens through natural means. The spirits interact with mankind through natural means. It's not that Satan can't do supernatural things that are beyond just typical nature. It's that he doesn't do it very often. It's rare. It's far more typical for Satan to put circumstances together in such a way that it's almost like he's putting a puzzle together. And he does it so subtly that most people don't even realize it's happening. I mean, I've seen people who claim that Satan doesn't exist be used by Satan to get his plans done or to get the wishes of his followers done. I've seen it with my own eyes. People who I've even seen people who claim to be Christians who claim to be guarded by the Holy Spirit say Satan can't touch me and Satan used them to do what he wants them to do. I've seen it. And I'm absolutely certain that there are Satanists out there who are listening to this right now who can attest to the fact that what I'm saying is true. People who have had personal experience with him. I know there are. Just like I know there are other people out there who are well aware that the spirit world works in such a way that if you ignore the spirit world, it kind of ignores you. If you act like it doesn't exist, the spirits act like you don't exist. If you're unmindful of them, they're unmindful of you. This is not my opinion. This is just something that I've learned over the years of practicing magic and practicing spirituality. And any Satanist who've had, who's had experience with this can tell you that it's true. It's not just my opinion. There are just certain things that are true about the spiritual universe. You may not know why, but it doesn't make it less true. And one of the things that I know about the spiritual universe, and I know other Satanists I've known have talked about it, is that if you ignore the spirits, they ignore you. It's just a reality. I don't know why it is. It just is. As I've always said to you, these opinions and the opinions I express on this show are mine, and they're just mine, and you can take them for what you think they're worth. But I've been in this for 35 years, and I'm telling you what I've experienced. Now, if you've experienced something different, I can't speak to that because I wasn't there, and I don't know what happened to you. But um, like I said, ultimately, we all have to make decisions for ourselves and what we believe. That's what being a Satanist is all about. So if I say something that you don't agree with, that's okay. We can disagree with each other. We can have different experiences. We don't have to be enemies just because we don't agree or we didn't have the same experience. That's one of the things that we have to stop doing as Satanists, in my opinion, is we have to stop making enemies of people just because we don't agree with them on a particular issue. It makes no sense. Our enemies are the Christians. Our enemies are the people who worship Jehovah, not each other. And so even though I disagree with a lot of what other Satanic organizations do, I try very hard, at least now, I didn't used to, but I try very hard not to criticize them for their beliefs because they have every right to believe what they want to believe. And we've got to stop making enemies of each other. We've got to put our focus on what really matters, which is the enemies of our God. Well, as it turns out, I didn't actually get around to talking about what I originally planned to talk about. And I'm just going to save it for the next episode because I don't want to make this episode too long. I do want to get to my entertainment review, though. I wanted to add this entertainment segment because I believe it serves two purposes. First, I believe it gives us an opportunity to talk about things we probably all enjoy, which is horror movies and supernatural fiction, which I know that most Satanists are fans of, and it allows us not to take ourselves too seriously all the time. I think Satan is about pleasure and about enjoyment and indulgence, and why not have some fun and have some lighthearted stuff instead of always talking about serious stuff all the time. But the other important thing is it maintains that balance that I'm always talking about. The third thing that I think is really critical about all of this is that entertainment shapes the culture and entertainment shapes the way we think about certain issues, um, whether it's politics or religion. So I think any show that highlights Satan as a main character is something that we should be rooting for and being behind, even if it doesn't present Satan in the way we hope. The fact that there's more Satan or Lucifer or whatever on TV, whether that's the Lucifer show on Fox or whether that's um, Damien on A&E, the point is the more Satan, the better. That's the way I see it. Because as people see Satan in a different light, they start getting away from the Christian mindset. And as I've always said, or as I've said in writing that I've done, I believe we're entering a Luciferian age 
where people are getting away from Christianity. They're no longer willing to accept the Christian idea about what life is supposed to be about. The important thing to note about all this is it's not that people are becoming more accepting of Satanism. It's that society is changing and becoming more satanic. See, because society is starting to get away from Christianity, it's starting to become more natural and in tune with nature. And as such, it's becoming more satanic. So therefore, people don't see Satanism or its viewpoint as an extreme viewpoint anymore, or at least most people don't. And that's why Satanists are gaining some acceptance in the public now, because people don't see us as extreme as they once did, because they're becoming more satanic as time goes on, because we're entering a new age of Luciferian consciousness, as far as I'm concerned, or as Crowley would put it, the age of Horus. The Christians know that something's changed. That's why they fight so much the cultural changes that are happening. They fight it because they know their time is coming to an end. They know their religion is dying. They know nobody cares what they have to say anymore. That's why they're having a fit about everything that comes on TV, because they're no longer able to shove their views down people's throat against their will, and they don't like that. That's why I believe it's so important for Satanists to support these shows as long as they're not disrespectful to Satan. Even if they're not perfect, they're better than nothing. And like I said, they're exposing people to other non-Christian ideas that they might not otherwise be exposed to. They're exposing people to other points of view they might not have considered before. And that's beneficial to us all. One of the other things I try to do when I talk to Satanists is encourage them to support these shows financially. If you like them, support them, because the one thing that this business is all about, the entertainment business, or any business for that matter, is it's about money. If you support it with your money, then you're basically voting for that show and shows like it to continue to be made. That's one of the reasons I intentionally buy high-definition versions of these shows, because I understand that... This is a business, and the best way for me to make my voice heard is to buy the shows and to keep buying the shows to tell the studios and the actors that I want them to continue continue to make the shows that I want to see. I want to see more Satan. So the best way for me to say that to someone is by buying the shows. Anyway, now that I've rambled on a bit, let me get to the actual review. The Lucifer television show is based loosely on the DC comic by the same name. And when I say loosely, I mean very loosely. They stay true to some elements, but they don't stay true to very many of them. It's really their own show. And the other thing I want to say about the show is that it's not meant to be a serious uh, commentary on religion. It's not meant to be disrespectful to Christianity intentionally. In fact, as a Satanist, it's very hard to get used to the heavy Christian cosmology. That's a major aspect of the show. But having said that, I actually love the show and I love the cast. I think the chemistry is great. But even so, I have to say that uh, I would give the show itself probably three stars out of five simply because some of the storylines haven't been as good as they could have been. And even the fans on Facebook and on, on social media have complained that there's not enough supernatural elements to it and they're not happy with it. Plus, the ratings on Lucifer have not been that great. They've been falling pretty much every week, except for last week, where they had like three-tenths of a percent increase. So if this show gets canceled, it's not going to be because the Christian protest against it succeeded. It's going to be because the people who liked the show didn't watch it enough and didn't pay enough attention to it, um, obviously, or, or it just didn't get a big enough audience. But there's still a chance that it might continue for another season. And Tom Ellis who plays Lucifer, does a great job. And Lauren Gurman, who plays Chloe Decker, does a good job as well. I mean, the whole cast is brilliant. So it's unfortunate that the storylines have not been as good as the actors themselves. I hope this is something that the showrunners will correct if they do get another season because the fans have been clamoring for more supernatural things and more demonic things in the show. And they don't want just a cop show. And for those of you who don't know what the show's about, it basically takes place in L.A. And Lucifer comes to L.A. because he's tired of being the devil. He's tired of being the bad guy. He wants to kind of experience life and experience what it's like to be a mortal. So he comes to kind of study mortals and to see how they live and to just get a feel for what it's like to be human. And he meets Detective Chloe Decker and he starts helping her investigate crimes. So it's basically a 
glorified cop show in essence is what it is. It's it's basically just another cop show, but it's but like I said, I don't want to give you the wrong impression. It is a good show. It has some really interesting dialogue and some funny stuff. I really love the show, but there are some episodes that just haven't been as good as they could have been. And I think the writers have fallen down on the job a little bit on some of these episodes. But overall, I like it. And as far as the cast goes, I would give them five stars for their acting and for the um, quality of their work. But as far as the writing goes, I'd give it three stars. Well, that's about it for this episode, guys. I hope I said something useful and I hope I helped somebody today. And I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to the main topic I intended to talk about. But I hope that it was still useful to you. And I hope to see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Dark Illumination Report podcast. For the latest news headlines, show information, and more, go to rjwomack.com. That's R-J-W-O-N-A-C-K dot